Creating soffits in Revit is an easy deal. You can create impressive results with a few techniques. In this tutorial, I'll be creating a ceiling effect using the soffit tool. I'll then add a fascia to the outside of the soffits to create a lighting tray. But first, I need some walls. I'll go to the Home tab, Build Panel, Roof, and there I'll find Roof Soffit. Here, I'm going to sketch the boundary lines for the soffit. Notice how I'm able to create an offset all at once. I did this by pressing tab as soon as I went over on top of an object. Taking this to a three-dimensional view, we can see that we have our soffit. Now this is a four-inch soffit and I can tell by looking at the properties type selector. Now this is a little bit thick for my use so what I'll have to do is I'm going to create a duplicate and in this version I'm going to make it three quarters of an inch. There we go. Next, what I'll need to do is apply a fascia. Now, for the fascia, or for this fascia, I don't have any proper sizes I can use. Right now, all I have is a 1 by 12, and if I were to use that right now at this moment, it doesn't even draw to the correct side. So what I'll have to do is create my own. I'll do that by going to Families, Profiles, and the 1 by 12 is actually coming from Fascia Flat, but I'm going to create a new one by going to New Family. Here I'm going to create a profile based Revit family. I basically start with two green lines and I have to make sure that my objects are aligned to this to these reference planes. I'll start by creating a rectangle and I'm going to also drop in some reference planes. Now you can think of reference planes as being like the skeletal object, the skeleton and I'm going to use the align tool in order to take the reference plane and one of the lines on the line that I just drew and constrain. And I'll just do this for all four sides. You first pick on the reference object and then second when you pick on the object the second selection will move to the reference object and here you'll find a lock and when you click on that that will basically constrain it such that when you move these reference planes the line moves along with the reference plane. What I'll do next is create some dimensions. Next, I'll go to Family Categories and Parameters. This is basically a profile. I'll leave it set that way. Uh, how would I like to use this profile? Well, right now it's set to generic, so I can actually use this for a multitude of different types of uh, family objects. However, 
If you want to just specify that this is only for fascias, you can actually select fascia and you'll see this profile only being used for those types of items. I'll just choose fascia. Next, I'm going to go to family types and create a new type. Now, if I'm unsure about the name or unsure about the size, I can just leave the name set this way. And I can actually create another type or rename this type later on. So I'll just leave it set to type 1. Add some parameters. And here I'm going to use height. And I'll create another type parameter for width. And then I'll take the dimensions and assign it to the parameters I just created. I can do that by selecting a dimension and on the options bar there's an options for label. Here I'll choose width and for this one I'll choose height. So what this does is it takes a dimension and it ties it with basically the parameter. So now if you change the parameter the dimension will change also indirectly moving this reference plane. Now the reason why this reference plane moves as opposed to this one is because um, I started with these two reference lines and notice how this one's actually pinned. So is this one. The pin object which is given right here allows you to lock an object onto a coordinate plane. So just to test this out I can go to family types and I'll make the height 6 inches here, width 3 quarters of an inch, and when I hit apply, there it goes. Now I'm going to save this object, and I'll call this one soft fit sighting. or better yet, fascia profile. And then I'm going to load this into the project. Now, when I create a, a fascia, there's actually a fascia type and I'll have to look for that when I go under roof fascia and that's it so I'm gonna create a duplicate I'll just leave that one there and I'll rename this to call it soffit sighting I'll edit the type properties and this is where I can now select the new profile I've created fascia prof profile type 1. Now I really don't like that name so what I might also do is go down to profile and rename this. All right, so now I'm ready to apply the fascia profile or the fascia to the soffit. And for this, I'm going to just show you in a three-dimensional view what this will look like. And of course, I haven't changed my type fascia soffit sighting Oops. and what I'll do here is choose the bottom line instead of the top line
then go around and there we have it basically a new lighting tray this is what it looks like with the section going through it I can also take further steps to make this model a little bit more like how it should be. Notice there's actually a black line. When I go in between the soffit and the fascia. And so in order to take care of that, I can use a join tool. You can find that under modify join. Pick the soffit, pick the fascia. Now they look like they've been glued together. I can also take this a little bit more uh, further. And what I'll do this time is basically modify this soffit by going to edit boundaries and I'll add in some more details, more effects. What I'm doing right now is trimming so that I can use, I'm sorry, the split tool so that I can use the trim tool to clean up the edges. Like so. I can also create really nice circles here and here in this case I probably should have kept the uh, center lines available. I'll just redraw those in. Then I'll use the split tool again. And here I'll use trim to keep cleaning. Maybe another circle in the middle of that might not be such a bad idea. And also a few arcs in the corners. drawing some mirror lines here. There you go. And I'll have to do some more cleaning. Trim. Alright, so there we have it. Now I'm going to finish this boundary and let's take a look at what our soft fit looks like from under looks pretty good and I can then continue by going back to roof fascia 
and adding more fascias. And notice how the fascia is gracious enough to be able to detect these arcs and add a nice wrap around those arcs as well. Notice how it creates actually an arc and not a circle for enclosed objects. So we'll have to do this two times here and basically just go around. And so that's about it. That's how you create really nice effects with soffits and fascias for very good dining room experience um, or for any nice interior designs. And so just like to thank everyone for uh, just joining us. And until next time, thank you.